I was very fortunate to grow up um, in, a, in a very religious home. Um, as being Polynesian, it's something that it, it really comes with our lives. Um, our parents are brought up in it, and of course our parents then, in turn, would bring us up in the church. And I can recall, um, as a young man growing up, the only thing about it for me was, I was always asking questions, even at a young age of even seven, going through my, to my early teens, asking, God, are you real? Do you love me? Your Bible says that, but I don't feel, I, I don't know, are you real, God? Do you really care about me? I can remember getting to my, you know, 15, 16, and really asking that question, because by this stage, you know, I, you know, girls were starting to come in and, 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 you know, enter my life, and all of a sudden, you know, those sorts of things, the, the questions of asking about God really did start to hit home for me, because it just didn't seem to me that there was any real significance that God would play in my life. And so for me, it was I realized that I was only going to church to make my parents happy, which is a very important thing for Polynesian kids as well, because if you, even if you didn't want to go to church, oh, you know Sunday morning you were up and had them <laughs> just, just, just a one prompt from mum to get you up for church, you're up and ready. So when I got to about 15, 16, I, I think I was getting to, I believe I was getting to that place where I was kind of deciding, well, maybe not, maybe God isn't real. And the words of a minister that I see as I'm sitting down the back of the church just was missing the mark for me. And so, um, and I think for me, I remember every Friday night with my friends, we'd go down to town, see what was happening, check out the, you know, all the, 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 the the, the whole shebang that happens on Friday nights. And the only thing about for me was there were always this group of people that were standing on a street corner without fail every Friday night. And they were singing about the same God and the same Jesus that I thought I knew and I thought I you know, heard about. That the minister was talking about on a Sunday. But the only thing I couldn't understand about these people is that they were really happy about it. There was something different about them, but I wasn't prepared to try and go and find out. And every Friday I'd see them, and every Friday I'd be there with my friends. And I don't know what it was, but I must have got too close to them at one stage. That so close that one of them stopped me and asked me this that question that you ask every <laughs> every non-Christian, I suppose. And the question was, excuse me, do you know the Lord? And I looked at this this guy and I said, Yep. I know God, I go to church every Sunday. You know, you don't have to tell me about God. Because why? Because I go to church. And, um, and as we stopped and we talked a little bit more, I mean, I knew um, <laughs> deep down inside, man, I don't even know God. And he started talking and we talked more. And he said to me, you know, you've got the head knowledge of God. But there's one thing that you've never done. And I said, what's that? He says, you've never asked him and invited him to come into your life. I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, and he just started to go through scripture and he's even talked about in Revelation. And though it, he, what he said to me, he said that when you know, Jesus is standing at the door of your heart and he's knocking. And the Bible says in Revelation that he who opens that door um, and invites Jesus to come in, Jesus will come in and sup with him and be with him and be his friend forever. And I didn't, when I saw that and I heard that, I thought, wow. I have never, ever asked Jesus to come into my life. I've asked God, show yourself to be real to me, but I've never, ever invited him to be Lord of my life. And so I remember going home that night with the track that he gave me, and I read through this sinner's prayer. And as I read through the track, it made sense to me. It made a lot more sense to me. And at reading at the end of the, of the track, that sinner's prayer, I read it through, and then I prayed it with all of my heart and all my being. Inviting and it said these three things. These three things. Yes, God, I believe that your Son Jesus is your Son. And I said, when I say that, and please forgive me for all the sins that I have done, because I tell you, up until that point, I knew I was a sinner. My life, what I was doing, was completely contrary to the principles of God's word. And then the third thing it asked me was, it asked me to do was to open my heart and invite Jesus to come into my heart. And I did that that night. I prayed that prayer in the quietness of my room. And so there began my walk 
with Christ and his word made sense to me. Um, I remember from that day just discovering more and more the desire to know God in that personal and intimate way. So I began my journey as a Christian. And um, as a 16 year old in the quietness of my room, um, I came to know the maker of heaven and earth in a personal way. 